Hello everybody, Chess Hoodie here. So uh, I have a special game to show you. So I was uh, black today against Blood on the Tracks 28. His rating um, was 24.10. And so he was white. Uh, we started with Knight F3, D6, uh, according to my repertoire, D4. And today I wanted to try Bishop G4. I heard about this move, but I have never uh, played it, or I have never seen a game. Uh, so I just wanted to explore what happens here. Uh, Queen d3 was played. Uh, probably opponent didn't want me to uh, double his pawns. Uh, so let's uh, go quickly over the next couple of moves. Uh, here I decided to um, blunt uh, this diagonal with c6. Uh, castles kingside, uh, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3, castles h3. And here I prepared a little trap with the move bishop f5. I was expecting for my opponent to retreat his queen somewhere, but once he played e4, I started to get excited because I had foreseen, uh, because as you can see uh, on my clock, I have only 5 minutes 55 seconds. So I was really thinking, and my opponent has 9 minutes 30 seconds, so he was playing fast. So by the time we got here, I set up a little trap, and it starts with the move a knight e4. And I was expecting my opponent to play g4, I'll show you later why, and on that I planned knight f2 double attack on the queen, so queen has to move somewhere, let's say here, and then just give up this knight and play with four pawns against a piece. Um, I thought this was a good position and after the game it was proven, I was proven correct. But once my opponent took this knight, I started to get excited. Usually when I play online, I'm cool because it's just an online game but for some reason today I was excited like when I'm playing a classical game and it's not because of this move of course I'm winning the piece back but it is because of what follows next because I had foreseen all that uh, just um, a few moves ago so let's observe um, white is just lost now uh, let's see I take this knight and whichever way he recaptures I have a beautiful move, knight c5. So I prepared all that when I played bishop f5. And it's not, this is, I don't know this opening. <laughs> so this is all uh, stuff that I came up in the game. And <laughs> my heart started to beat. I don't know why. Of course, if he takes like this, he loses the queen. If he takes with the knight, uh, he also loses the queens, the queen. So, he cannot take, and for that reason, his queen is attacked, and uh, he will lose a pawn. And now came a problem for me. I didn't know how to take that pawn, because there are several ways. I can take the knight, and then I can take this pawn. Or, I can, in the same variation, I can capture this pawn. Or... I can do what I did in the game and capture with the bishop and then when he takes I can choose either to transpose with knight takes, uh, queen takes, bishop takes or to take the pawn this way. So this was the worst option <laughs> but I wasn't sure and as you can see I have only two minutes now because here I lost some time to figure out how to capture that pawn. I didn't see all of that before. I saw that I'm winning a pawn, but I didn't know which one was better. So now I chose the worst one, but it's still enough for a win. Uh, my opponent helped me a little bit. Uh, he should have brought the bishop uh, back here. But he went to c2, and now I went queen d7 with the plan to transfer this knight to d4 as quickly as possible and to force him to exchange the c1 bishop for this knight and go into the opposite colored bishop's uh, position with the pawn up. Uh, so why did they do that? 
because that's the simplest way to win. Uh, I just, from experience, know that with an extra pawn in this kind of position or similar one, uh, when you have opposite colored bishops and uh, one centralized bishop and his bishop has uh, no targets, that's just an easy win as long as you keep the heavy pieces on. And something similar happened, so let's just observe. So. The important part is to get with my knight as quickly as possible to d4. Uh, so that way he will get. I will get rid of his bishop pair. And this is what happened. And look, I can always uh, support this bishop with either c5 or e5. So it's unassailable. That's an eternal bishop that's going to keep uh, pressure on his position. And just with heavy pieces and pawns, I'm just going to coordinate and. I knew that this was winning, and after the game I checked with the engine, it's just almost minus three. So this this is just, this comes with experience. Uh, rook bd1, rook ad8, and here he decided to give me uh, this pawn. So, okay, he helped me a little bit, but so now it's minus six. But even had he not done it, uh, he would not uh, have been in a good shape. Uh, so, of course, I took, and uh, now... I'll just uh, go a little bit uh, quickly through the rest of the game since this position is just uh, completely hopeless uh, for um, white. Uh, there are many ways. So you can choose uh, to block completely all three files when he pushes to push or you can open one file or you can let him capture. Whatever, whatever you do, it's, it's all winning. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, because um, this bishop is too strong. And eventually I'm going to create threats. So there are many ways. It depends what he does. But okay, let's just go quickly and see. I just... Uh, the only problem was that I was very short on time. As you can see, I am on 20 seconds, 25 seconds all the time. So I couldn't uh, think much. And even with his strong bishop on c6, uh, it doesn't help. Uh, so let's just observe what happens. So I'm advancing. And he can sack here, but it's no help because I'm the first to attack. And um, let's see. Now, yeah, so now just the pawns are dropping and my king is safe. I exchanged one rook and then I entered here. And there is no way to save this one. It's going to be uh, four pawns up. And let's just uh, see the finish. Yeah, here... When you have one pawn <laughs> advantage and opposite color bishops, it's usually good to keep the rooks uh, to increase your winning chances. But when you have three <laughs> pawns, <laughs> the opposite is true. <laughs> Just exchange the rooks because uh, then there is zero counterplay by your opponent. Of course, if it's not a draw, but here, obviously, it's not a draw. Uh, so I exchange to make my life easier since I was very short on time. And now I just uh, need to queen one of my pawns. Uh, uh, here, my opponent set me a little trap. Uh, if I go here, I think he wanted to do this. And if I take, it's a stalemate. But even if he succeeds in um, um, letting the trap uh, uh, spring open, I, I, I can still rectify and just go back or, or push. doesn't matter. So it's, it's, it's unsavable. But okay, I didn't want to let him do that. So I pushed the pawn. And I advance my king, and here, after this, the checkmate will come on the next move. So, with this game, uh, we crossed 2300 against a decent player. So, as you can see, his rating is 2410. Uh, at least it was before the game. Uh, and we got some points, so we crossed the 2300 mark. And I'm really happy uh, with my um, play in the with my technique also, but with my play in the opening, when I set up the trap uh, after e4, uh, knight e4, and then uh, the follow-up with knight c5, <laughs> my heart was <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, uh, beating. I don't know what happened. I got excited, but okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> it was a good game. I am really uh, happy how I played. Uh, not always the case, but today it was. Uh, thank you for watching and see you again. Bye!